Hi there, Mr. Wilson. Are you positive you can't identify any of the rustlers that shot you? Never got close enough. They were all strangers to me. Well, it's not much to go on. But don't you worry. You'll get your cattle back. Or you'll get our check in full settlement after the customary three days. Thank you, Mr. Hackett. I'm certainly glad I insured your cattle. That's our business. We always back up our policy. Good day. Good day. Another claim? Yes. Wilson lost 24 head yesterday. Gentlemen, between paying off cattle claims and keeping up the orphanage, you can plainly see why our reserve fund is so low. However, after today, you no longer have to contribute to the orphanage. As you all know, you... The orphanage are... must be kept open. Mr. Clark's will provided the proceeds of this company will be used entirely for the support of that institution. Miss Moore, you know that's impossible. I have no control over the cattle raids. If you knew how to run the company, it would never reach this stage. It's very trying to have a woman at a business conference. This meeting today is for the board to approve my order regarding the public adoption of the children this afternoon. We will be far better off in the homes of kindly couples. Kindly couples? You mean people who find it cheaper to adopt children than hire servants? We won't discuss the matter any further, Miss Moore. The orphanage closes today. That's final. That orphanage was old Sam Clark's pet idea, Hackett. He'd turn over in his grave if he knew it was being closed. My decision stands. Gentlemen, are you agreed? Then the meeting is adjourned. You had no right to call the meeting of directors, Mr. Hackett, without the sanction of the three musketeers, trustees for the Clark estate. No vote is legal without them being present. Don't worry, Miss Moore. I'll take the responsibility of handling them. Kind of looks like your police force falling down on the job. They ought to be out after them rustlers. Well, I'm starting them out on the trail immediately, Mr. Morris. And if they don't get the rustlers this time, there'll be a big shake-up in the department. Well, I hope they do. Good day. Goodbye. Glad you came around. Captain Gardner, yes, come sir. into my office. That was a pretty good speech you made about the shake-up, boss. $690 is a lot of money to lose in one day, Hackett. Any trace of the rustlers? There'd better not be. Get rid of the cattle in the usual manner. Right. And with the orphanage closing today, things ought to come to a head pretty sudden. I'll have control of this company in less than two weeks. And when that happens, we'll put a stop to the rustling quick enough. But I've got to make an example of somebody. Round me up a couple of rustlers. Oh, uh, any uh, particular type? No, use your own judgment. Yes, sir.
Chief Big War Chief off the reservation. Hey, what's his blanket mean? Range police officers. Officers, my eye. We know a jazz band uniform. We spot one, don't we, Lullaby? Hey, mister, to settle a bet, do you work for a local funeral parlor? Yeah, I bury clowns like you. Get their guns, Canary. Got you that time. Got the comedy or I'll let you have it. Now, where's the rest of your outfit? Shall we tell them? Well, what do you think? I don't know. Reckon it's proper? Maybe not. They wouldn't understand anyway. They're too dumb. Yeah, but on the other hand, what have we got to lose? That's right. I reckon we're better. Well, you tell him, Juzan. The rest of our outfit is on the pack horse. You're a smart guy, ain't you? Wait, you... Oh, Stoney, your hobble's loose again. He's a little hot-tempered. As for me, I wait my time. Hey, what's the idea of this stick-up? I'll ask the questions. Where's that bunch of steers? What steers? So you don't know anything about them, eh? Well, the Cattlemen's Protective Association does. You're going in town to recover your memories. <laughs> Cattlemen's Protective Association! <laughs> <laughs> now, you fellas got us all wrong. Not so you can notice it. We know crooks when we see them. I tell you, you're making a mistake. Shut up. Get on your horses. around and you'll find out. the majority stock of the company you're working for. How was I to know? The same way I did. There they are with Mr. Clark. That's me on the end. Oh, wait a minute, I'm wrong. That's my horse. A thousand apologies, gentlemen. Now, if there's anything I can do... Oh, that's all right. We all make mistakes. It was a terrible mistake. You see, we've been having rustler trouble, and the boys wanted to show results. I'm awfully sorry. Won't you sit down? No, pardon me. say, Mr. Brooks, that it will be all right. We're closing the orphanage this afternoon. You're doing what? We're closing the orphanage. You see, we've had unusually heavy losses this year, and I thought it best if the orphans were placed in suitable homes. Oh, you did. Come on, fellas, we're heading for the orphanage. We'll talk to you later. I hope there's no hard feelings, boys. Forget it. Tucson, what told you back? They're heading for the orphanage. Trail them and report back to me. Your work. And big farewell to all. 
I'm so glad it's all over. That's all right, Janet. You did fine. I don't feel like singing. Can you wash dishes and iron? I can wash dishes, but you can't iron, I suppose. That's just it. You teach these children everything in these orphan asylums that the things they ought to know. Shall we take a Hiram? Well, it's up to you. I don't want a kid that'll be sick all the time, not able to work. Have you got a girl that's older than this one? She looks kind of puny and underpaid. Well, why don't you hire a servant if you want one, Mrs. Perkins? Janet isn't puny and she isn't underfed. She's a healthy, sweet child that would bring happiness into any family that appreciated her. But you're like all the rest of the people that come here to adopt children. You just want them for slaves. I've never been so insulted in all my life. You couldn't be insulted. Miss Jones. <laughs> Will you take charge for a little while? Certainly. Please don't feel bad, Miss Doris. It ain't your fault. Thank you, Bobby. Maybe if I'm bad enough, nobody will adopt me. Then I'll get a good job someplace and you can keep house for me. That'll be fine, Bobby. There he is in the patio with Miss Moore. Bobby! Kind of looks like that housekeeping idea's off. Mr. Rankin here wants to talk with Bobby. He's interested in adopting him. Yeah, I want to look him over, find out if he's the kind of boy I want. Bobby, answer all the gentleman's questions. Oh, all right. Is he healthy? Does he eat much? He's perfectly healthy and eats as much as a normal child should. Stick out your tongue. Mm. Bobby, that wasn't nice. Well, he wanted to see my tongue, didn't he? Well, I guess you ain't got nothing wrong with him. Can you cut wood? No, can you? How often do you take a bath? Do you brush your teeth every morning? Do you know the Lord's Prayer? Do you go to church every Sunday morning? Well, now, look at here, young fellow. And how much is seven times six? You can see for yourself, he won't do. Come out here, you. What are you doing, Bob? Putting into other people's business is a bad habit, stranger. Liable to cause accidents. Yeah, well, this happens to be our business. What's this fella chasing you for, son? Oh, he wants to adopt me, and I don't like it. I don't blame you. We're the trustees for the Clark Estate, and the adoptions are all off. Now get going. Well, I come all the way over here from Rawhide. We don't care where you came from, Beta. Say, ain't you the three mosquitoes? Uh, something like that, son. <laughs> you could never arrived at a more opportune time. I'm Doris Moore, superintendent in charge of the orphanage. Well, glad to know you. I'm uh, Stony Brook. This is Tucson Smith, Lullaby Jocelyn, my assistant. <laughs> Say, let's run the rest of these slave buyers out of here. Right. I'm sorry, folks, but all adoption proceedings for the day have been canceled. You can't cancel the adoption now. It's enough, Ray. After letting us come all the way over As the here. As in charge of the uh, orphanage, we've decided to keep the place open. Now, if any of you have any complaints to make, take them up with Mr. Joslin here. I come over to adopt a couple of kids, and I ain't leaving without them. I'll see what the law has to say about this. Beat it. Vamos. Have you made arrangements to finance the running of the orphanage, Mr. Brooks? No, we haven't, but it's going to stay open. From now on, we're running the clock stick to suit ourselves. Look at this! Look at this, Brown! Where'd you get it? I got it. What's that? I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, 
careful there, young and Elmer's kind of touchy sometimes. Is his name Elmer? Yeah, and he's the smartest kid you ever saw. <laughs> Yesterday, Wilson's herd was raided, and as usual, the rustlers got away. Hackett claims to have paid out over $60,000 insurance losses since Mr. Clark's death. Naturally, then, they haven't any funds left for the orphanage. Well, it's going to stay open. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid it's no use, boys. The state officials notified me they will close us down Saturday, unless we show we are financially reliable. Saturday? That gives us three days to get the money. Well, don't worry, we'll get it. Come on, Lullaby, we're riding. So long, kids. Bye. Bye. Can I be of any help to you boys? Yes, you can. We're going after the Wilson stock. We'll try and pick up the trail. Right. We might as well separate and do a little scouting. Let's spread out and comb the valley. Right. You three take the south side of the valley. You three take the north side. We'll take the center. in the gardener's hand. We want him alive for questioning him. Look at all 
of us dead and wounded. Yeah, must have been all shooting cap pistols. After that brave stand of Captain Gard and his men, I think we know who's in back of the deal to break the association. Yeah, let's drive that herd back to Wilson and do a little house cleaning. Musketeers got away with the Wilson herd. What about our men? I framed it so they got away after following them to throw off suspicion. Well, that ought to put us in the clear. I'm not so sure about that. Those three fellows are plenty smart. From now on, we're going to be under suspicion. Sim! Yes, sir? Call a meeting of the board of directors for tomorrow. Just a minute, Sims. From now on, we're giving the orders. Forget that board of directors meeting. Yes, sir. Hack them, get out. Hack it, you're through. Well, I don't understand. We're running this business without your help. Well, I'm the general manager, and it'll take a vote of the board of directors to put me out. All right, then we'll call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 You're out. Get their guns, boys. They belong to the company. And after 13 cattle raids, you didn't recover a single head. You paid out $60,000 insurance losses. Hackett, you're either a fool or a crook. And when I get through these books, I'll know the answer. Now get out. Well, letting you go too, Sims. Sorry. I'll get my things. At least our friend Hackett will be out in the open from now on, Stoney. That's just what we want. Hey, Stoney, what you make of this? Found it in one of these here uniforms. Carson. Isn't there a rancher by the name of Carson in this district? Yeah. He's one of the association's biggest clients. He's been insured with Clark for years. The loss of Carson's herd would bust the Cattlemen's Protective Association flat, and Hackett knows it. We've got to beat him to the punch. This time we'll do a little ambushing ourselves. Well, hello, Doris. What are you and Bobby doing in town? I'm trying every way possible to bring money, Stoney. I've arranged to put on a children's show in the town hall tomorrow afternoon. And we're here to the kitties today. That's the idea. Put us on the bill. We'll help. Thank you. Tucson, there's a fan there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't pay any attention to him. He's a little pixelated. But don't you think we'd better be going? We've got a little business to tend to. I'm only going where he's not here. Not today, Bobby. We're liable to tangle with cattle rustlers. <laughs> yeah, but I can hold your horses while you're shooting at him. Mr. 
the trustees found an open gardener's uniform, and I think they're wise to the castle ready. You fool. Maybe it's a good thing they found that note. Go to the ranch and get sidearms. Cut through the pass and hit them before they reach Carson's. And when you wash them up, you can drive the herd off. That's thinking, boss. what we're planning to do. Will you stop worrying? Dismount them. Get your rifles ready. They were cattle rustlers, Sonny. Started shooting before we recognized them. Well, where'd they go to? Didn't hit none of them, did ya? No. They all got away without a scratch. But we're going after the real rustlers now. Do you want to go along? Jiminy Christmas! Could have drowned for all he cared. Shucks, I seen you coming out of the river and I know you're okay. <laughs> sure. Get into your clothes, Alibi. Say, they didn't get Carson's herd of cattle after all, which is something. Say, you know, I nicked one of them. Keep a lookout for a bird with a bum wrist. You did. Say, now we got something to work on. And we'd have had all three of them bottled up tight if it hadn't been for that brat Bobby. What'd you do with him? Now I sent him back to the office. Well, you dumb jackass. What you gonna get away for? I'm going to the office. I'll be back later on. Why, hello, my little man. I'm not your little man. <laughs> Where is everybody, Bubby? I think they're in town at the opera house rehearsing for tomorrow's show. Well, I've got some good news for you. I'm going to adopt you. Well, I don't want to be adopted. I like it here. That's enough, Bobby. Come along with me. I don't want to get you. Let me get home, darn it. You'll be all right. Leave that boy alone, Packard. I'm adopting you. You're too late. I adopted this youngster myself yesterday. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm taking him home with me. Move aside. You're not taking this kid nowhere. Move or I'll give it to you. 
Drop that gun and don't move. Don't turn. Now you can turn. I forgot to tell you, Hackett, that I was a ventriloquist. What's up? Oh, Hackett here is trying to dump Bobby. Hackett, your being here saved us from going after you. We've gone over the company books and now we know you're a crook. Unless you return those stolen funds by tomorrow night, we're coming after you. I don't bluff easily. Bobby, what were you doing today that Hackett wanted to adopt you so sudden-like? Nothing much. See, I was only out trying to help you catch those cattle rustlers. Is that when you ran into Hackett? No. Only saw Captain Gordon. Were any of the police with him? Well, I ain't supposed to talk. Why not? Well, because if I was Captain Gardner, I wouldn't. There's your answer. Let's get him. Wait a minute. We've got to use our heads. Hackett's the man we got to break down. Yeah. Say, Tony, I didn't know you went over the books. I didn't. But if Hackett thinks I did, it'll force him out in the open before tomorrow night. Thanks to you, Gardner, Bobby tipped the musketeers off. Well, what are we going to do? We're all going to attend that show tomorrow afternoon. How do you do? Good afternoon, folks.
Terrible accident. 
Oh, your mother-in-law had a terrible accident? Yeah. Well, how did that happen? Well, the mother-in-law come to my house to stay about three months, see? Yeah. She's just as hale and hearty as she ever was for her life. Just as hale and hearty as she ever was for her life? Yeah. She wanted to go home, put her in the car to take her to the station. Yeah. She just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. Is that so? Go down to the station, she went in the waiting room to get a ticket. She's standing around just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. Is that so? Went out on the platform, and you could hear the train. She's standing around on the platform just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. Train pulled in. She started to step up on the step, and oh, I can't tell her. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's awful. I know what you're going to say. I know you're going to say that your mother-in-law started to step up on the step, slipped, fell out of the train, the train run over and killed your mother-in-law. No, it was worse than that, lullaby. Worse than that? Worse than that? Well, what in the world could be worse than the train run over your mother-in-law and killed her? Train pulled out and left her standing there just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. <laughs> The other two will be showing up in a minute. Doris, make sure all the children are out of the theater before I finish my act, won't you? You will be careful, won't you, Stoney? We need you. We? Well, I do, then. I'll get the crystal ball for you. All right. Yeah, it's a nice tune. <laughs> Not too sad. This is a showdown. We've got to force some information out of Canary or we're sunk. So is the orphanage. Give them everything you got, Stoney. Right. Ladies and gents, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the metal marvel of the age in his world-renowned exhibition of supernatural powers. He can tell you your past, your present, and your future. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Swami, Stony Brook. Come on, children, hurry. Stony will demonstrate his remarkable mystic powers on any subject I will select. While the spotlight is on this subject, Swami, Concentrate deeply and tell us if you can see into this man's past. This man's past is very clear to me. I see an accident, an injury, an injury to the right hand, I believe. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Can you see any more of the gentleman's past? I can. I see him start out in life an ambitious boy. His trail leads downhill. He meets the wrong kind of men. I see them getting him into trouble. I see him forced to lie, to steal. And I see his future. I see him with his hands tied behind him. A guard on each side. Walking up a flight of 13 steps to a platform where a rope is waiting. It looks like a noose. A hangman's noose. Oh. No! Yes! And with that rope around his neck, he tries to save his soul from everlasting torment. Why should you alone pay for the crimes others have forced you to commit? You've only one chance. Save yourself before it's too late. Speak! Speak now! He made me do it! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
circle around and attack from the rear. Stand there. on the trail. I'll get the money. to do you two birds a lot of good. I suppose I should visit the orphanage a couple of times a week just to sort of see how things are going. I really think you should. Of course, I can only make it at night, especially moonlight nights. So you're going to watch after the orphans on moonlight nights, eh? Well, I have to come over once in a while sort of check up on the place. Sure. Hey, that's my job. I'm only interested in little orphans. <laughs> hey, Lala, boy, you ain't gonna forget to take me along with you, are you? Lala, die's taking you nowhere. <laughs> Didn't you say you were gonna adopt me? I did say something like that. Not by just for two dummies in the family are enough. <laughs> Elmer's only kidding. You're going right along with me. <laughs> <laughs> 